Hello traders, it is Thursday, April 23rd, and we are about two and a half hours into trading. Been a very exciting day. We had a nice market run up early today. Things started to get a little bit overextended in here. I had let everyone know in the chat room that I thought that we might be seeing some selling. Take profits on your longs. Had this 1OP cross. That is my S&P 500 indicator. Had this nice upward sloping trend line that was breached on a five minute basis. I got short up here. Took about a 70 cent profit in SPY or 7 S&P 500 points. We've temporarily found a resting point in here. I believe that the market is going to continue to come down. After such a big run, how did I know that the market might be vulnerable to a little bit of profit taking? Well, it's pretty easy. I've been going into the daily chart and showing you the patterns that are setting up. Tight, tight candles, meaning that the open is close to the close. Doji, 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 doji. What does that mean? The market is not going anywhere. Asset managers are waiting for clarity. They're waiting for earnings season to play out to the extent that they get any guidance from corporations. They want to see how that news pans out. They also don't know how quickly the economic recovery is going to happen. Is this something that's going to start unfolding in early May? We don't know. There might be a lot of states that choose to extend the opening of the economy. As we get more and more news, I'm getting more and more concerned. I'm getting a little bit more bearish with each day. And for instance, we heard from the ECB today that they are going to be accepting junk bonds as collateral from their banks. That's how weak their bank financial situation is. So the government's buying all these junk bonds. That could pose very long-term credit issues. So a little bit scary. We've also heard from the EU that the growth in Europe is going to be negative 10% this year. Uh, we also heard from Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin that he doesn't believe that the economy will be back on track until late August at earliest. So that's the end of the summer. That's also very, very long time. I feel that there are a lot of things that are going to start weighing on the market. We are halfway between the high and the low on a daily chart, and that SPY 288 level is in play. Now, that is the 100-week moving average that I've been pointing out. I'm going to put up the 100-period moving average here and the 200, and you can see right here that the 100-day, we barely touched it right in there. I think resistance is going to build and build at this level. Will we get through it? I don't know. We've got mega cap tech earnings coming up next week. We also got major moving averages at the SPY 300 level. Great news from Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. Eh, gosh, I don't know. If we get up to that level, I'm going to be very anxious to buy some puts because I see this recovery taking a very long time to unfold. And I see industries like oil that are going to be gutted. Retail, horrible. Home building, horrible. Big ticket items like cars, people are going to be holding off on those purchases until they know that they have job security. So we've got $6 trillion of stimulus that's been thrown at the economy. That is keeping a bid to the market. I hope that uh, small businesses take advantage of these loans and they hire back all their employees. We've got to get through this shutdown first, second week in May get everything back on track very quickly. That's the only chance that we have. And there are global issues, so we need to be very aware of this. From a very short-term perspective, what does it mean for us when we're day trading? It means that we have to expect very tight daily ranges. And that takes me back to my earlier point. As soon as the market got overextended on the buy side, it's natural that we're going to be in range types of trading environments. This, even though it was a very, very gradual channel upward, was extremely compressed price action. And you can see how near the close, boom, gave all those gains back. Very, very hard fought gains during the course of the day. All it took was one bar to give those back. So in all practical terms, this was really just a very tight compression yesterday. We're likely to see the same today. I believe the low of the day will hold. I believe the high of the day will hold and the market will chop back and forth. But there's still a lot of tremendous 
trading opportunities. And that's really what we're focusing on from a day trading standpoint. I'm going to set you up with a swing trade and a day trade. Before I do that, I want to go into SNAP. That was the stock that I highlighted yesterday. I'd mentioned it to you about two hours, two and a half hours into trading. I said, this is a long that you can take. I also showed you a really good bullish put spread that you can put on. And let's scroll back just a little bit here. And you can see when the video came out, the stock was right about here. So that's where it finished. So we were probably at the, let's call it the $16 level. When I put the video out, I said I like selling the April 15 puts that expire tomorrow. And I like buying the April 14, 50 puts that expire tomorrow. Doing that spread for a 10 cent credit, I believe 12 cents was available. That is a 25% return on the margin that you had to put up in just three days. So these opportunities are out there. Excellent trade. Stock after a huge run up yesterday, taking a little bit of a breather, but it still looks very, very good on a daily basis. We want this halfway point of that long green candle to hold. So as long as that happens, it'll be in good shape. I also showed you PayPal yesterday. I like selling that out of the money May 1st. Bullish put spread, keying off the 107 level, selling the 107s, buying the 106s, doing that for a 15 cent credit. That stock also in very nice shape today. Going to switch gears very quickly. Going to take you into my chat room. I'm going to show you my comments from yesterday on the close. Long CHK, $20.21 came up on one of my searches. And we were trading this into the close, and many, many, many members were holding it overnight. Well, CHK was on my bullish explosion search. I know every five minute, 20 day average volume for every stock and for every five minute period during the day. I collect tick data. When there's something unusual happening in the underlying stock, it fires on our searches and we see it instantly. These bullish explosion alerts, they alone will pay for a subscription in the course of just a day or two. There are certain things that we look for, but this is what the pop-up looks for. It comes up right in Option Stalker. I don't want anyone to miss these because these are huge trades for us. And it means that they've got extreme price movement and extreme volume. So that's what the bullish explosion alert looks like and on CK we've been getting them today and we actually had gotten a bullish explosion alert also two days ago on CHK and that's what initially alerted me to the stock look at that price movement yes we had a lot of members that held it overnight I saw the explosion alert and I got long this stock on a search actually it was a volume search so I get made about 30 cents on a $20 stock in 10 minutes yesterday, I put a high target out there. I said, ah, if they take me out, I'm going to lock in my profits. And many members said, yeah, I like this one. I said, I do too. I wish I weren't filled on that. Stock's been huge today. We've been trading the bullish explosion alert all day. And I'm going to scroll down in the chat room and I'm going to show you that. Then I'm going to show you another trade that we did. So I'm going to continue to go down and we'll start taking a look at, there are my morning comments for everyone. And you can see all the trades that are posted. We post entry and exit in the chat room. We're very focused on symbols. There's no chitty chat in here. We want to trade stocks. Everybody knows the types of patterns that we're looking for here. And as we come down, we're going to start getting into all these CHK explosion alerts that started popping up. A lot of money made on this stock this morning. So I'm going to continue. LYV was another one. I'll show you that stock as well. Another one that came up on our heavy volume and breakout searches. There we start getting into CHK bullish explosion alert. You can see this is one hour into trading, 932 central time. And then you're going to see just tons of posts with everybody getting in and out of CHK. And of course, when I try and scroll it for it, it, is a little more difficult so there we start getting into it but anyway I'm going to go all the way to the bottom because I was just about to do my recording 
and one of the members pointed out a stock and I took a look at it and I said, man, I love that one. So we'll take a look at the search that it came up on and we'll take a look at uh, the post there. It was F-W-O-N-K and I have not traded that one before, but you can see there, took an 80 cent gain on it. I joined that trade. I made 20 cents on it. Long F-W-O-N-K. So let's go in and take a look at how this stock came to our attention. EDU, okay, this is one that I'm short, so that's good. It's below. That's actually a short that I like today. So I'm going to go into heavy buying, and F-W-O-N-K was showing up in this search. I believe it was also in the relative 30 search. Let's see if it's still in there. It is not. It might have fallen back a little bit, but let's take a look. And you can see exactly the type of pattern that we were looking for. Look at this beauty. I'm going to put up the SPY overlay here. And you're going to see relative strength. Market down, down, down. Stock up, up, up. This was such an easy play. When we see these, it is money in the bank, especially on high volume. This is going to be a swing trade that I think you can take advantage of now. Depending. If it runs 3 or $4, don't buy it. If it sits right here or it pulls back a little bit to that 2850 level, yeah, all over it. Look at this long green candle and look at that nice horizontal breakout through horizontal resistance right here at this uh, $27 level. What's the company do? What's the stock do? I don't care. All I do is look at the technicals. The technicals are telling me that somebody is out there buying this stock. LYV, same thing this morning. Stock came up on a search, looked at the relative strength. You can see a downward sloping trend line that's been breached to the upside, but it was the five-minute chart that got me excited on this one. So once I saw the five-minute chart and I saw all of this big volume and these long green candles stacked one on top of the other and a breakout to a new high of the day, I was in. I was in right here, made fantastic money on that. These are the types of searches that come up in Option Stalker. So you just keep going through these searches. There are three of them that I really like during the day. One of them is heavy buying. One of them is relative strength 30. One of them is bull run. Just keep pounding through these top five symbols because they update every minute. Just keep looking at what's at the top of the list. Pound, pound, pound. And you're going to be able to find stocks like LYV and FWONK. That's how we do it. CHK. Now, on a swing trading basis, we also have a lot of great searches. By the way, I want to mention to you that before the open, we also want to be taking a look at after earnings because we're in earnings season right now. LVX and BX were on that search this morning. We've got the bearish counterpart for everything that I'm showing you as well. So I'm going to try and find you some decent overnight trades. Pop Bull, that's the one that I use to find really nice swing trades. So you can go through this list. You don't have to concentrate on the top stocks, but anything in the top 20. So I would just continue to go through and look at these stocks. And there you can see FWONK. So again, that's going to be the swing trade. It's a stock play. I don't believe that it's got very liquid options in it. And we're going to take a look and see what's in the heavy buying list right here. We've got Netflix. Looks quite good. Now, I've been telling you that we have a search that goes back and looks at stocks after earnings. See the strong after earnings search? That is something that we're going to really, really rely on in the next week or two. What it does, it's a look back type of search. The earnings have been posted in the last two weeks. The stock gapped higher. Stock was able to hold those gains, and now it's off to the races. Now look at the strength that you're seeing in Netflix. This is a classic example. You look at the initial earnings reaction and you go, wow, that's surprising. I thought those earnings were good. And then you see the stock rebound two or three days later. But by the time you look at it, you realize, oh my gosh, if I would have bought that dip after earnings, would have been a really nice play. So today we have a bullish engulfing pattern setting up on Netflix. It's not quite a bullish engulfing pattern because it would have had to make a new low for the day. But if I'm just looking at the body, yes, this is a nice pattern. And it looks like Netflix is getting ready to stage a rally. So there's the number after the close. Pulls back a little bit after the earnings announcement. Probably a little over optimistic on the number. 
and stock pulls back but it was a really excellent number and that gives us an opportunity to get in i do like netflix so on netflix i like being long i think this stock will work well today i think this stock will work well overnight so if you're watching this after hours i think this sets up well tomorrow buy dips if you're looking for a swing trade i'd like to go out of the money on this one we've got this opening bar from this long green candle i'd like that to hold this would be a really good area to sell an out of the money bullish put spread on right at that 390 level Let's go in and take a look and see if we've got anything that lines up at that uh, 390 level. So we could go out a little bit in time. We'll go out to the May 15th normal expiration cycle. And we're going to look at that 390 put. And I'll show you how I construct it. On any put spread, I like to make at least a 25% return on that spread. This one's going to last about four weeks. I like selling the 390 put. I like buying the 385 put. You can see that that spread is currently 80 cent bid offered at $1.20. We have $5 between the strike prices. So you would need to get $1 for this spread, which is right between the bid and ask. There's your $1 credit. So I think this is an excellent, excellent trade to do. Let's back out very quickly. So the premise of the trade is that this breakout right here is going to hold, which is all the way down to the 390 strike price. If the market runs into trouble, as I'm telling you, it may over the course of the next few weeks, this stock should hold up well. Look what it did during the market decline that we had recently. There's a bullish explosion alert for CHK. It's probably pulling back. We're not going to be distracted by it, but that's how those alerts come up during the day. Uh, in any case, let's put that SPY overlay up so we can see what the stock did during the market decline. Market sell-off, huge, huge, huge. And you can see how the stock held up really well. I mean, it held the 100-day and 200-day moving average very, very well. So if we get a pullback in the market, Netflix is probably going to continue to do very, very well. In fact, Part of the reason that their sales were so good was because people were staying at home watching TV. So if we get a market pullback, case is maybe the coronavirus is a little bit extended and some of the shutdown is going to last longer than we'd like. So I think Netflix is a great play. You've got lots of cushion. You're able to take advantage of time decay and generate really nice income. So as long as the stock stays above that 390 level between now and May 15th, you're going to make a 25% return. Not too shabby. That's how you need to play your swing trades right now. Take advantage of that extreme volatility, implied volatility. Take advantage of time decay. Very easy position to manage for swing traders. You put your stop in on a closing basis. If the stock closes below 390, then you've got to reel that baby back in. Otherwise, no action required. Let time work its magic. Stock will continue to move higher in this case i believe that's a very bullish bar so that's a trade for you so now that i've got a bullish swing trade out of the way for you and what looks to be a good day trade today look at that nice bounce right in there you can see what the market's doing right in here the market bounced also but netflix really found support before the market did and it's off to the races right now so Buy dips on Netflix. Do you have to run in and buy it right now? No, I think it's the type of stock that moves around. You can wait a little bit. You know the market's going to be choppy. Market's going to be sideways. Wait for those dips. Put those trades on. So let's keep taking a look, see what else we've got. I'll focus a little bit more on some day trading opportunities, see what else we've got in here. Uh, I'm on the heavy buying list. IBM announced earnings yesterday. A lot of post earnings plays. Look at that compression at the high right here. That is excellent relative strength. If I put the SPY up, you'll see that pullback right in here. What's the stock doing? Grind, 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 higher. That tells me IBM wants to go. Take a look at the daily chart, see what we've got going on here. Well, we've got a little bit of resistance overhead. Well, what do I do with that, Pete? I don't know, I wanna buy it if it breaks out above this horizontal resistance. Yeah, so do I. Click GTC. Double click on that 
top of that bar. Now I've got a horizontal line. IBM gets it through that horizontal resistance. I'm going to know about it. You could also argue that if IBM, you've got this nice upward sloping trend line, you can look to sell a bullish put spread below that 112 level. I'm not as bullish on IBM as I am on Netflix. And that's why I'm not highlighting it. I think that if IBM gets into a market decline like this, it's going to sell off. Most stocks are going to do that. You can see how the market is starting to rally. Look at this indicator. This is the only indicator I use to trade the market. This is the premise behind all of our buys and sells. When we see the market have a bullish cross on 1OP, we're long. We're buy, buy, buy relative strength. Go through the relative strength searches. Hit them hard. Get across here. That means, hey, got to take some profits on your longs. We could hit a snag up here. Could be trouble. We get a breakdown below the upward sloping M5 line on the SPY chart. Get across right here after a big spike in the 1OP indicator. Mm, time to go short. Okay, so we go short. Ah, Look at this. We get another bullish cross in here on the 1OP indicator after a big drop. Uh, okay, probably want to take profits on my short, which is exactly what I did. Time to get long. Market moves higher. This is how we time all of our entries and all of our exits for day trades. And then we rely on the searches in, in the Option Stalker platform to show us the best candidates. That's how it works. It's a systematic approach so that when we're in the chat room, I'm providing play-by-play -play market commentary. All of the members know the patterns that we're looking for. They know the searches to find. We've got a particular language so that we can be very efficient in the way that we post our entries and exits. So we're simply communicating and posting symbols to each other when we're entering trades, when we're exiting trades, what our target for the trade is. But this is the systematic approach that we use. So if you've been contemplating taking the free trial, highly encourage you to do it. PayPal. Take a look at that. Yes, that's continuing to look good. Just going to continue to go through and look at what else might be firing here today. Just looking at some charts. Will has been on the list as well this morning. That is only a, it was a $1 stock yesterday. It's almost a $2 stock today. So that stock has been really moving higher. You can see that big uh, rally right in there. It started coming up on searches yesterday. Look at that volume. Is this a buy? Uh, the government's talking about buying oil producers so that they can buy these assets on the cheap for strategic reasons. I think that's why these stocks are getting a nice pop. Let's keep looking. Let's see what else we can find. Relative strength 30. We got the market moving higher. BYND has looked good. That's been on the list most of the day. LLY also. Look at that breakout on BYND through the 100-day moving average. I like that. That is really nice. As soon as you see the stock getting momentum and it's above a major moving average, that's always a good play. Earnings not until May 5th. Hover over the E. You can see that earnings date. Let's go into the five-minute chart, see what's going on. Stock pushing up against the high of the day was able to maintain most of its gains while the market pulled back. Looks pretty good. I love it. I love the fact that it's above the 100-day moving average, but you can see fairly choppy stock. Let's look at Lily. Lily posted. Oh, beautiful. Look at that wedge formation right there. As soon as it broke out of that wedge, gone. While the market was pulling back, it was moving higher. There's another bullish explosion lurch. C CHK is just going absolutely nuts today, but this is just a beautiful wedge formation right here. Let's put up that 1 OSI indicator. This also shows relative strength. As long as the orange line's above zero, it indicates relative strength. Earnings before the open, hence the B. Really nice. So, uh, excellent, excellent opportunities right now with earnings season unfolding. I like Lily a lot. You could use Lily for a swing trade also. That's how it's going to be over the course of the next two weeks. Earnings season is what I call a price discovery moment because you've got news that's come out. There's 
price disparity. It takes a long time for institutions to figure out where that security should be properly priced. All we have to do is to take a look at these searches and to take a look at relative strength, the patterns that we like, and then we can get in and ride their coattails. And I'm going to disable this because we're now we're getting an awful lot of searches on CHK. It's kind of all over the place, but that's how we do it. So I really like Lily. Did you see how easy it was to find those trades? If I went into Pop Bull, like I said, this is going to be a fantastic search for swing trades. If I want to add some filters to it, I would like to see it on a buy signal on a one hour basis and a two hour basis. Those would be your candidates right in here. Or you can simply go with a daily basis if you'd like and really narrow the list as well. Uber coming up. Not a big fan of Uber, but, but let's see what it's doing. This is a nice compression and a breakout through horizontal resistance. Should be able to get up to the 100-day moving average. Not my favorite kind of play, but uh, simply because I know Uber is going to run into some problems. Maybe Uber Eats is working out well for them. I'm not really sure, but it's been compressing for a long time without a lot of momentum. So I'd like to see more of a green bar here coming out of this compression. And we'll put up that five-minute chart, see what that looks like, and choppy. So no, I wouldn't do Uber, but that's another way that you can use this pop bull search. Also, and finally, is after earnings, strong after earnings search. These companies have reported, and they're doing well after reporting the number. This is such an easy search to click through. Take you two minutes if you're an end-of-day trader. Take a look at what's firing after the earnings announcement. These companies have announced in the last two weeks or so. There are a lot of metrics that go into it. These will be your best candidates. Once you see that earnings announcement and the stock on this list, then you go in and take a look to see if there's a bullish put spread that's attractive. So we'll just use JBHT as an example. Actually, J&J &J will probably be a better example. This stock has been super hot. Anything that you can sell down around that 100-day moving average would work really well, and it would give you some cushion. But this high right here would be good for day traders. You can lean on that previous high, and as long as the stock is above that, you continue to stay long. It. You could even use it on a swing basis, but you've got to be very disciplined. Don't look for a long-term trade on this because you can take out that high quickly. But if it starts to grind, 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 well, now you've got some cushion and you can start trailing your stop up. That's how we do it. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications. I know I never used notifications before. I didn't even subscribe to YouTube channels. But in this case, it's worth the risk because I can post these videos at any time and they'll always have great trade ideas. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.